So welcome to my spoiler video discussing the finer points specifically of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I did do my non-spoiler review on the channel yesterday, so if you have not seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, which I do recommend you don't get spoiled till the third act, you can read up on the basic stuff, but there's a lot of surprises in the third act, so don't try not to spoil it for yourself. So go check that out because I go through like the basics there. Here we're going to go into the actual movie, and this is for those who have seen the movie, so let's get to it. The opening sequence was the first one that had a little bit of a lack of realism. Now, like I said in my non-spoiler, a little bit of a lack of realism is one thing. The first three movies definitely have that. Um, depending on what your religious beliefs are, you know, the first and the third one might not really vibe with you. It all comes down to that. Some have accepted it. Some have said, well, it's religious fiction. Like, there's nothing in the Bible that says that spirits come out of the Ark of the Covenant and killed Nazis. That's not in there. They had took some freedoms with it. But I've seen some people, you know, say, you know, it does kind of make sense. Why would God align himself with Hitler? You know, all that stuff makes sense. Um, but it's still religious fiction. Now, like that aspect of it, not what's in the Bible, meaning what's in the movies, but you have a bomb dropped in the middle of this room and it sinks down and then there's an explosion, Indy's okay, like those bombs would have blown up the entire place and they all would have been dead. That's why I said in my non-spoiler that there's a couple of things that are similar to the refrigerator scene from part four, same thing. This is, or not the same thing, but it's similar. It's not as bad, I don't think, but it's similar. Also, um, shortly after that, they have this cool sequence on top of a train, right, where, you know, they're running and whatnot. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And Mads Mikkelsen's character gets nailed by this, like, wooden, like, I guess like a pole or something. Now, with a train running at that kind of speed, he would be dead. There's absolutely no way he would have survived that. He would have been decapitated. To me, that's probably even more unrealistic. Now, again, like I said before, the first three movies have aspects of things that you have to take with a grain of salt that aren't really truly realistic, right? But the last two, four and five, are kind of over the top with it, you know? It all depends on your own personal tastes. Now, when it comes to the movie, I did enjoy the character of Helena Shaw, Phoebe Walker, Phoebe Waller Bridges character. Sorry about that. She was good in the movie. She was basically like <laughs> the Han Solo of the film. You know, she was all about the money and Indy wants everything to be preserved in a museum. You know, just like how he's always been. Here she is, you know, wanting to take the Dial of Destiny and sell it. You know, it is what it is. When I first saw Mads Mikkelsen in the present time, like, well, not the present, but, you know, years later after the flashback sequences... I thought it was like his twin brother or I thought that he had already used time travel, right, at some point. I thought maybe he had gotten the Dial of Destiny and lost it. That's what I was expecting. Turns out that it's the same guy. So somehow he survived, didn't age a bit, and again, he should have been decapitated. That was weird. Antonio Banderas as Ronaldo, I don't know, man. That felt like maybe not enough stuff for him to do. It's a bit more of a cameo than that important when you get shot in the knee you know it was just i thought they were gonna do more with him you know and it is what it is also salah making his cameo i did like that because he was there for the first movie and the third movie and he works in new york now so what a coincidence you know it did that cameo did feel shoehorned in thank god though because this movie didn't really this movie didn't really like um overdo like the the member berries it didn't really overdo it and they could have done that here and they didn't do it now i want to discuss what happened to indiana jones since like the last movie he was getting a divorce or a separation from his wife because what happened was and we find this out later in the movie their son the character that um shia labeouf plays in indiana 4 he dies in the vietnam war and that to me was a really sad twist they reminded me of the force awakens when you see that Leia and Han are split. I talked to a few different people like Mary Mayhem who really hate the fact that The Force Awakens split them up. And I've talked to fans that say the same thing, that they shouldn't have been split up, they should have been together. But realistically speaking, these things do happen in real life. I'd hate to say it, but even now, the divorce rate is really high. And as much as these movies like to tell us, you know, that we can find that perfect mate and live happily ever after, the real world is a cruel place, man. And not everybody lives happily ever after. And based on what we've seen 
very few people do, at least not with the, you know, what we think is the one, you know, but at the end of this movie, we do get some movie magic because seeing Marion Ravenwood again was awesome. Having them kind of reenact the scene from the first movie with the whole, like, it hurts here, it hurts here. Very good stuff. Very emotional. I thought for sure, y'all, that when she popped up at the end, they were going to show Shia LaBeouf's character. I thought that because early in the movie when, um, when uh, Helena asked Indy, what would you do if you could travel through time? And he's like, I would go back and tell my son not to join the war, right? And convince him not to. That I thought he was going to do that. I thought for sure at the end when he woke up that she had done that. That she had gone back in time and somehow convinced them to not do it. And that in this timeline, they were both still alive. But that's not what happened. They didn't go that route. And you know what? Even though that would have been a really powerful moment, I'm glad they didn't. Because it shows. Here's why I'm glad they didn't. Because the whole theme of the movie, Indy wanted to stay in the past. Indy wanted to live out his archaeological dreams in the past. However, don't you find it kind of weird that in the middle of a war, you've got these, you know, people from the ancient world looking at these people from the future and not, and he would have been killed. He would have been called a witch or something, you know? Realistically speaking, that's another example of, okay, you have to kind of you know, suspend your disbelief here. You understand what I'm saying? He wouldn't have survived. Plus the whole bullet thing and, you know, so then she punches him out, which some people didn't like that, but I was fine with it because she he's old. He's old, okay, and she's young. Then he wakes up in the bed at the end and she's there. I thought for sure, but, I, but the whole point of the knockout was as much as Indy wanted to stay in the past because he thought there was nothing left for him in the future, sort of like Doc Brown in Back to the Future Part 3, it was still imperative that he goes to the future because it doesn't create a, a problem with time with time travel, which I'm going to get into in a minute because there still was a problem. And that, of course, uh, means that she knew the ramifications of messing around with the timeline. Having a Nazi plane... Look, let's keep it real. Having a Nazi plane crash land in like 800 BC would completely change the timeline. Or 200 BC, whatever. I said 800, 200 BC. That would completely have changed everything. Especially if you believe in the butterfly effect. They would have had materials from the future. They would have had, um, maybe the engine didn't survive, but they would have had enough to kind of get an idea of what was coming and sort of push forward technology. It would have changed the entire timeline. So... When it comes to time travel stories, there's always a problem, guys. There's very few time travel stories that make sense because there's too many paradoxes. That's one of them. Also, in this film, you've got the whole chicken and the egg paradox because the the dude in the past, right, the, um, the inventor, um, Archimedes, Archimedes was his name, he created the Dial of Destiny to... God, it's a mindfuck. He created the Dial of Destiny knowing that somebody was going to go back in time and give him the watch to create the Dial of Destiny. See what I'm saying? That he got from um, that he got from the deceased uh, Jor Jorgen Voller from Mads Mikkelsen. So, like, it's a time paradox. Like, which came first? Now, again, there's ways to explain this if you believe in various different time travel theories, but... It's still a time paradox, and I know some people have an issue with these kinds of stories because when you really break it down, time traveling into the past already creates a paradox. Just doing that can create a paradox, which is why I don't believe it's possible even with string theory. Well, no, that's not true. With string theory, it is possible going into an alternate timeline, but having one straight timeline with a paradox, it's cool for fiction, but... And again, this is fiction. It doesn't make sense in the real world, but again, we're talking about fic he's a, he's not the movie's not real. Like people oftentimes will say that this is unrealistic or that is. And again, it all depends on the person. Some people can handle a little bit of a lack of realism and others can't for your Indiana Jones. Obviously, again, they they're way past making it quote unquote realistic. The most realistic movie they've done is Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first one. It's the most grounded one. And even that has tons of stuff that isn't really quote unquote real. It, it is what it is. Now, going back, the action sequences in the movie, the scene with Indy on the horse was great. I mean, that was, I love that scene. The car chase scene, I thought was a little bit too reminiscent of the first movie, but I think they were kind of doing that on purpose. There were member berries sprinkled about, you know, there was that. 
But like I said, it didn't just feel like the entire movie did that, sort of like what The Force Awakens did. And I like The Force Awakens. I still think it's a well-made movie. It's just, you know, it's obviously a new hope with a new coat of paint. Uh, this movie was not Raiders with a new coat of paint. They at least tried something new, and the time travel stuff was something new. I mean, it definitely was something new. I love that they had the thing with, like, the airplane traveling across the country they did with the boat. That was cool. I like how they had, like, eels as, like, the, the water snakes. Uh, that was good stuff. I like how, you know, you had the thing with the, when they were in the, the, the catacombs, and you had all those, like, millipedes, like, all those bugs. That is sort of like a member berry, but it's a trope. That's more of a trope to Indiana Jones stories. We always have rats or roaches or bugs or snakes, some kind of reptile. That's like a thing that scares audiences. So you're supposed to watch that scene and be feeling all, you know, itchy because it's, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Just, uh, it's supposed to freak you out is what I'm saying. Okay, so I got to talk about the kid here. The, um, the, uh, the kid, uh, Teddy, who was friends with Helena, this kid can fly a plane, dude. I don't know, man. He was, again, he was not as annoying, anywhere near as annoying as Short Round. Indy! 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 He wasn't that bad. But there were just things that he did, like, that were... Look, if I was a kid... Here's the thing. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to play this game called Microsoft Flight Simulator in school. I crashed the plane every time. And it's supposed to be a quote-unquote flight simulator. So if it's a kid who is, I don't know how old he was, 11, 12, maybe younger than that, flying an actual plane? Dude, if I flew an actual plane at 12, I'd be dead. I would be dead, dude. Like, flying a plane is not easy. There's a reason why you have to get a license and why you have to, like, you know, train with, a, with an experienced pilot. You can't just learn how to fly a plane. Driving a car, you can probably learn that when you're a kid. Hell, I learned how to drive when I was like 12, 13, I didn't, I couldn't legally do it, but I learned how to do it, but driving a plane, or flying a plane, that's a whole other can of worms, you know what I'm saying, and I don't mean that as a pun with the worms in these shows, I noticed that Indy in this movie definitely did a lot less than he did in other movies, there really wasn't like a fist fight, he used the whip a couple times, but a lot of it was sort of running, and kind of like, you know, going on adventures, and searching through catacombs, and things like that, he wasn't really having those, like, you know, him riding a horse and things like that. It, there was cool, there was cool things he was doing, but he wasn't fighting, which I think actually makes sense. I think it actually makes sense because he's 90, I mean, he's not really 90, but he's old, okay? He's old. And so it's one of those things where it's hard to believe that Harrison Ford being this old, and obviously Indiana Jones is not as old, even though that de-aging tech they used on him they used the opposite tech on Marion at the end of the movie because I've seen recent pictures of Karen Allen. Karen Allen actually looks really good for her age. She, I mean, in this movie, she was definitely aged up. She right now is 71, but she looks in the movie like she's in her 90s. Like they either the pictures that I saw are not accurate to how she looks now, even though I, I typed in. Karen Allen 2023 you can do this too and she looks a lot younger than she did in this movie so they obviously aged her up a little bit um because of you know to match up with Harrison Ford remember Harrison Ford was already an older guy when he shot these movies in the 70s and 80s his actresses were younger like Carrie Fisher was super young when she did Star Wars you understand what I'm saying so Harrison was in his 30s he was a grown-ass man so it is what it is you know but nevertheless um, she, I, I, she looked a lot different, but the point I was going to make was having him fight and throw punches may not have been the right route. Maybe some fans wanted more whip cracking, but the story really didn't really, it wasn't really like that. It was more so like, it felt like an adventure story that they're traveling the world. They're going on adventures. They're, you know, finding ancient artifacts, all the things that Indiana Jones has given us in the past were in this movie, except for like a fist fight. Like in that to me, I'm okay with that. Indy uses a gun at one point, which I think I was fine with. I mean, there's, I have a problem with that. Um, so again, it's just, I don't think that's really a fair criticism. I understand people don't like this movie, especially the critics, but already, guys, if you look 
The fans are loving this movie. So this is yet another example. Another one. Yo, this is like the fifth one this year, guys. This is like the fifth one where the critics have shat on a movie and the audience loves it. It's very interesting. I mean, Black Black Adam, I liked it. Some folks hated it. Um, Sh Shazam 2 was a little long in the tooth. And, and I understand the dislike for that. And I understand the dislike for... Ant-Man even though I liked it but there were other movies that just got like low reviews but then the fans saw it and it's like hey this is actually pretty good you know The Flash most of the people I talked to even though it flopped everyone who saw the movie liked it so again I don't know man the critics are starting to be oh I'm not starting to be it's been that way for a while I've been talking about it but again, now it really feels like they are overdoing it now with people not liking, the, not agreeing with the critics. I want to also talk about something else. There was a subplot in the movie where Helena like almost married this mob guy. I wanted to know more about that. They, they literally dropped the story and move on to the next part of the plot. But I was watching it thinking it was going to go somewhere, but it didn't go anywhere. She was like engaged to him or something. He shows up on the streets of uh, in Morocco or whatever. Like, you know, I really thought that they were going to, you know, follow up with that. And there was nothing. Also, I, I was hearing that people were like worried that the Helena character was going to be like replacing Indy that she was going to get the hat and that she would become like the, the next hero or whatever. And I'm glad they didn't do that. I remember Shia LaBeouf for a long time. They thought he was going to be the next big explorer, the next big archaeological adventurer. And that also didn't happen. It would have been too cliche. I thought this ending was satisfying having him kiss his, you know, him and his wife getting back together. I mean, they need each other, yo. Like, you know, he almost died, and they have their last years together, and I like the idea of, of, of Harrison Ford, of, of Indiana Jones and and a Marion, like, being together before they both eventually pass away of old age. Like, you know, he's retired now, and I think it's a permanent retirement. Uh, they can't make another one of these movies. They can do prequels with a younger actor, but they just can't make another one of these movies. So, to me, I do feel like this was a satisfying ending. Ultimately, though, I've talked about what I need to talk about. I can't really think of anything else that I'm missing as far as like what there is to talk about. The plot was moving pretty fast. There was very few parts that were boring or slow. I enjoyed it. I really did. There are problems. It does not hold a candle to the original three, but it's better than the fourth one. And I thought that they could have done a lot worse. There were a lot of fears going into this movie that I had that that could have become a reality, and it didn't become a reality. And to me, I, maybe I went in with low expectations, but it is what it is.